So today we're going to be looking at three of the big hitter tests for assessing for a meniscal pathology. Um, I would reference you to look at your text for the specifics on the psychometrics for these uh, individual tests, both uh, Cleveland's Netter uh, text as well as um, our primary textbook, that being Raymond's uh, text. With that said though, all three of these are oftentimes used together as a cluster and can provide a fair amount of diagnostic accuracy for identifying meniscal pathology. How you would end up using these is based on mechanism of injury, a complaint of pain in and around the knee, and possibly even swelling or joint line tenderness. So let's start with our first test, that being McMurray's. Now, the way McMurray's test was originally defined was merely a moving test through flexion and extension with either a valgus or a varus force. It then was modified to include an internal and an external rotation motion, which is a little bit more provocative and oftentimes reproduces the mechanism of injury that would have created the meniscal pathology. However, the position of internal to external rotation, and if that's paired with valgus or varus, seems to be not as important for the diagnostic accuracy portion. So let's go ahead and look at what this would, would look like. First, we need to unlock the knee, and in this case, to maintain good body mechanics, I need to bring the table up just a little bit. From here, this is a moving test from flexion to extension. And so what ends up happening is you need to first make sure that you clear the hip and the foot and ankle, but what you're going to do is you're going to take them into a degree of valgus while also providing that overpressure into a more medially directed force. And so what that does is that creates a valgus stress here at the knee um, yes, that would be more provocative for the medial collateral ligament, but what it does is it approximates in that lateral compartment of the knee, and our thought is that it puts more stress on our lateral meniscus. So what it would look like is this, a motion from flexion to extension with that valgus stress occurring. Conversely, we can provide a, a, a varus stress on that medial side by taking the individual out and into more of an extended posture. Now they're into a little bit more external rotation of the hip. We're providing that force down and then back up. This is often a scouring motion where it would go back and forth between uh, more of a flexed position to an extended position and then integrating in the internal to external rotation. And so from here, if we bring our, our hand from kind of the plantar aspect and grasp the calcaneus, we can actually create that internal and external rotation along the tibia as we provide that more valgus versus varus force. And so modified McMurray's then is an external rotation and, and valgus force primarily, and an internal rotation varus force as you move into an extended position. From there, we're actually going to have our individual flip into a prone position as we move to our second test, which is Apley's. For Apley's, you would have the individual flex to approximately 90 degrees, and it's very similar to what we see with tibiofemoral distraction, because Apley's would use both compression and distraction as a way to look at symptoms at the knee. We think that if we provide that compressive force along with a slight internal and external rotation moment across the tibia, that again, we're creating some shear force between the distal femur and, and the menisci. Additionally, if we traction and there's still symptoms that are present, we think that may be more ligamentous um, or may even be more capsular in terms of where that pathology is coming from. And so what this looks like is this. We need to bring the tape down just a little bit We're going to provide a compressive force, essentially straight through our hand and arm into the tibia. And so you can use your body and approximate here to create that compression. If you see kind of a divot occurring on, on a treatment table, uh, that's a good sign. And then you can use your other hand to help combine that internal and external rotation of the tibia on the distal femur. Now, while doing that, be mindful that you're not really creating a lot of friction between your hand and the patient's skin, because that's not very comfortable. From there, you can also create slight distraction, as well as internal and external rotation. 
And that can help you differentiate, is this more of a compressive or a distraction uh, type pathology? Again, that was Apley's. Our last test then is called Thessaly. So we're actually gonna have our patients stand up. Let them come on this side of the, the table. We're gonna bring the table back up so he has something to hang on to. And for this, he is just going to get his fingertips on the table. And you may demonstrate this first. They're going to go into a single leg stance position or balance position, just their fingertips so that they're still weight bearing, almost all of their weight on their uh, assessing side. And then from here, they're going to be just slightly out of an extended position. So you may crouch down and have them kind of move into about five degrees of knee flexion. And then from here, you're going to have them rotate through their hips, creating that internal and external rotation that we saw with the Apley's and McMurray's test. So they would go into more internal, more external rotation. You then would ask if there's any provocation of signs and symptoms. If they do okay with this, your second step is to bring them now to about 20 degrees of knee flexion, thereby kind of ratcheting up a little bit of the compressive force and have them move through internal and external rotation again, looking for your comparable sign or provocation of signs and symptoms. From there, they can relax. It's not uncommon for someone to get a catch, click, or a pop during this, or to feel a giving way as a form of kind of a protective sensation. So, have a go with a peer or colleague. Also, you can go through some of these yourselves, specifically with Thessaly's. The three tests that we use for looking at meniscal pathology, aside from palpation and some functional tests, again, are McMurray's test, our Apley's, and then finally Thessaly's. Let me know if there's any questions.